Pope Francis just handpicked a judge who is pro-abortion, pro-LGBT, and pro-prostitution. What's wrong with that? Join us with the latest from the Eternal City Church Milton Rome correspondent, Dr. Jules Gomez. Jules, Pope Francis has quite a track record in recruiting unsavory characters to high positions in the Vatican, but this one seems to take the cake. Tell us about it. Uh, Brad, on Friday, the Holy See Press Office announced that Pope Francis had handpicked, handpicked is the word because he knows him from his days in Argentina, and Pope Francis handpicked uh, Justice Raul Eugenio Zaffaroni, a notorious judge. Again, I say notorious because even the secular media has had a lot to say about him, and this man, this judge, has been been appointed to a newly created body. Uh, this body is supposed to uh, deal with issues of colonialism and social rights. It's got quite a long title. It's going to be called the Fra Bartolomeo de la Casas Institute for Research and Promotion of Social Rights. Now, Pope Francis created this body in the Feast of the Assumption and uh, uh, made this uh, appointment on the Feast of the Assumption but the Holy See press office announced it only on Friday. Now, uh, Jules, we know that uh, there's talk, this, this public, public uh, reporting on the fact that he's pro-prostitution, pro-LGBT, pro-abortion. Uh, uh, Let's start and tackle with the pro-prostitution thing. How, 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 how is that? How is he pro-prostitution? This is probably the biggest scandal in uh, Judge Zaffaroni's uh, record because in 2011, uh, an anti slavery, anti human trafficking campaign group called La Alameda, uh, they discovered that uh, six apartments owned by the judge out of the 15 apartments he owns uh, on uh, Vincente Lopez Street in Buenos Aires were being rented out as brothels. Uh, first, they discovered just one flat, where one apartment with three rooms, and all three rooms were being used throughout the day by two or three prostitutes who were charging around $30 an hour. And the neighbors noticed it. They noticed that the judge never turned up there. But the prostitutes kept coming, and there were more and more problems. And they uh, you know, uh, told uh, the media about this. The media conducted an investigation. It was reported. And then they discovered, lo and behold, it was not just one flat, but six flats, six apartments that were being used in this manner. Now, now, uh, the judge, of course, denied it, and uh, uh, funnily enough, his uh, lawyer took the rap. I think he was fined about 10,000 pesos for it, uh, and uh, the judge said, well, I had no idea my flats were being used for these purposes, but interestingly enough, uh, he should have known because he was getting the rent, and these flats, these apartments, were being rented at three times the market rate. I, I guess he would just call that good business. Now, okay, if he if he says, okay, I didn't know about that. What about the fact when we say pro prostitution, we're talking about his record of decriminalizing or attempting, wanting to decriminalize prostitution, and even in an egregious case involving an eight-year-old girl. Can you go into this? Well, he clearly said that he doesn't consider prostitution to be a crime. Now, it's very important to know that Zaffaroni is what uh, jurists call an abolitionist. He does not believe that prisons will solve problems. And even for the most serious crimes, he is, you know, he says, let's not have prison. I don't know what he suggests as an alternative. Interestingly, Pope Francis himself took this route. He not only said, let's abolish the death penalty, which he did, but he also said uh, he doesn't believe in life imprisonment for uh, uh, criminals who have committed very serious crimes. So uh, uh, the judge thinks along similar lines, and uh, there was another very, very uh, outrageous outrageous case where the dole man, the watchman, in a particular block of flats uh, forced an eight-year-old girl to have oral sex with him. 
and uh, he put his penis in the girl's mouth and uh, it, this was done in the toilet, the lavatory uh, in, in, in that building. And uh, the judge uh, let this uh, criminal off, this pedophile off, with a slap on the wrist. He should have got a seven-year sentence, which then it was argued, let's bring it down to four years. But he was just let off with a slap on the wrist because the judge said that he comes from an underprivileged background. And if we throw him in jail, his family will suffer. And uh, basically, I mean, most, uh, uh, most shockingly, the judge said, well, uh, it was not penetration, vaginal penetration, and so this little girl would have had felt no pain and probably have no psychological trauma. Uh, so if it was not vaginal penetration, it was not rape. I mean, this really provoked even the secular media, you know, to write against uh, uh, Judge Zafaroni's very loose sense of uh, the jurisprudence and morality. Okay, so this is the character now, Zaffaroni, uh, who is being tapped by uh, Pope Francis for a, a particular uh, Vatican entity. Can you tell us more about that particular position that he's in and, and the academy that, or the, 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 the entity that he's going to be helping staff? What do they do and why do they need him? Well, he's going to be one of the founding board members, Pope Francis named three. Um, uh, now, this comes under the uh, umbrella of the Pontifical Academy for Social Sciences, uh, which was founded by Pope John Paul II in 1994, basically to help explore the Catholic Church's social teaching. So this body that is going to be a challenge, you know, that is going to address issues of colonialism and social rights, they call it, not human rights, but social rights, is going to deal with these issues. We don't know too much because uh, we are not told that Pope Francis hasn't described what this academy seeks to achieve uh, precisely, or this little body under the academy. But we do know that the Pontifical Academy for Social Sciences has gone very left wing under the Francis pontificate, and it's gone kind of far from the social teaching of the church. You know, we are talking about Leo the Thirteenth and Rerum Novarum and all that sort of stuff. And it's gone into globalization and uh, 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 one earth, one world stuff. Uh, Jeffrey Sachs, the guy who also is very pro-abortion and uh, talks about depopulating the world, uh, the Harvard professor, is one of the regular speakers uh, at the Pontifical Academy for Social Sciences, which, by the way, is headed by Cardinal Peter Turkson. Now, Jules, you know, abortion, homosexual issues and, and prostitution, my goodness, those are all social, <laughs> under the umbrella of social sciences, <laughs> you would think. Now, uh, this judge also, uh, you, you mentioned, has a pro-abortion and pro-LGBT stance. Can you go ahead and get our viewers up to speed on that? His uh, pro-abortion views uh, need to be nuanced here. Because he does admit that, uh, you know, killing millions and millions of fetuses uh, or babies is a tragedy. But then he says, uh, you know, we don't live in an utopia and it's not possible to institute laws or penal codes that will take care of this problem. And if the law does punish women who have killed their babies, murdered their babies, then what the law is doing, what we are doing in effect in Argentina, is uh, punishing and penalizing the poorest and the most underprivileged of women. So that's the way he tries to wriggle out of the whole abortion debate. And he says, of course, abortion should not be criminalized. But then he's also very much in favor of LGBT rights. He believes the government should strongly support things like uh, civil unions and gay marriage. And has even said that on a number of occasions, he has wanted to participate in uh, LGBT pride marches. My guess is the only reason he did not actually participate or participate perhaps he has in more recent times, is because of his high profile, uh, you know, uh, role as a Supreme Court judge, uh, where one is not expected to so openly and explicitly take sides on political and social issues. Uh, Jules, just before moving on, it's good to note here that the church herself, in her canon law, does punish 
uh, women for having an abortion, those who seek an abortion, those who procure an abortion, are actually hit with the hard, harshest penalty, excommunication. Uh, so the church herself has, is very clear that the woman is, to, um, is responsible for killing her child. If she kills him to, to the person two minutes before birth or two minutes after birth, she's still committing murder. It's a heinous crime, and she's actually excommunicated. That excommunication has to be lifted uh, you know, in the confessional. So, um, but, but moving on here, Jules, what's, um, Pope Francis has quite a track record. You know, we talk about ta yeah, tapping immoral people, people who you wouldn't think are, you know, they're not on board with Catholic teaching, to positions in the Vatican. Uh, this is not a one-off thing. Can you catch our viewers up on some of the past, Pope Francis' past appointments, who were pro-abortion, pro-euthanasia, pro-contraception, and pro-gay, uh, and, and now pro-prostitution, uh, these people being elevated to positions of power. Can you give us a, a, a little bit of a background on that? Of course, last year, you remember, Brad, we reported Pope Francis' appointment of this notorious uh, pro-abortion economist. Now, yes, she's world famous. She's even won the Nobel Prize, uh, Professor Mariana Mazzucato. And he appointed her, I mean, this is hugely ironic, to the Pontifical Academy for Life. Uh, somebody who's pro-abortion, obviously pro-contraception, and uh, anti-capitalist, you know, again, her position is far more nuanced, but, you know, on the whole, uh, doesn't support the present uh, structure of capitalism. So uh, he then went on to appoint quite a few other people who are pro-abortion to the Pontifical Academy for Life, including uh, uh, Professor Roberto De Loro, who believes that uh, there's no problem in killing a baby uh, before uh, the baby can suffer fetal pain. And then Sheila Clue, uh, who I think has something to do, I mean, she's one of the top people in the World Nursing Guild and, uh, you know, with, with the United Nations and all that sort of thing. But again, she was appointed to this uh, august body. Uh, there are a number of other people, and one wonders, you know, whether it's the uh, the health forum that was organized during COVID and had all sorts of dodgy characters there, uh, or people he meets personally or in secret, like uh, uh, Albert Burla, the uh, president of uh, the, the CEO of Pfizer, uh, and, uh, and uh, of course, Jeffrey Sachs, who is a regular visitor to the Vatican. Uh, Jules, now for the for the uh, the, the sixty three thousand dollar question. It seems personnel is so oftentimes policy. So why do you think Pope Francis? You personally, Jules, why do you think Pope Francis uh, does this? Why is he fine with hiring or promoting, elevating, tapping, handpicking such people who are blatantly? against church teaching in their public and professional lives. Well, when I spoke to top officials at the Pontifical Academy for Life, they gave me one explanation. They said Pontifical Academies are not magisterial bodies. Uh, they are, you know, like a university. And so uh, we don't want to exclude, as they said, uh, people who may be academically, academically top in their field, world-renowned scholars, uh, and we wish to include them uh, because obviously we want to hear what they have to say, we value their contribution, and we know that, uh, you know, we are not going to change church teaching simply because they are on the Pontifical Academy. Uh, this was one explanation. The other explanation, of course, is that Pope Francis wants to come across to the world as genuinely open, following the trajectory of Vatican II, which seemed to have overturned, you know, let the world come in and we'll open our windows and doors and every other aperture that we have so the world can come right marching in. Uh, so uh, this sort of almost, uh, uh, it's almost a kind of virtue signaling, look how open we are. Uh, but thirdly, and this is where it could get sinister, uh, it's probably because Francis actually uh, believes in some of the things that these people hold to. Uh, I'm not saying he's pro-abortion because he's held a very strong line on abortion and compared to a, an abortionist to a hit man. But then people, uh, you know, Pope explainers will defend him, say, oh, he doesn't really know what these people are. But he has said in the case of Mariana Matsukato, he's read her books. He said openly 
how much in, in his autobiography, Let Us Dream, I think he says, how much he appreciates her writing. And of course, with the judge, uh, Zaffaroni, clearly, you know, this time, Pope's plainness cannot get away with the fact that, oh, he doesn't speak Spanish because that is his native tongue. And he doesn't know the politics of Argentina because he was uh, buddy buddy with Zaffaroni during his time in Argentina. And he, Zaffaroni has been handpicked by Pope Francis. But uh, I've just pointed out that ideologically, Francis agrees with him that our penal uh, system is not fit for purpose. And for example, not just the death penalty, but even life sentences need to be abolished, Brad. Yeah, and of course, he's, uh, you know, pushing for decriminalizing homosexuality. That was a very public thing there. So the problem, it seems like when you open up the windows and the doors, a lot of flies seem to fly in. And that's, that seems to be evident here. Uh, you know, Christ personally picked St. Peter to be the first pope, a man who was a bit boastful, who denied him three times, and who had to be corrected by St. Paul for chumming it up with the Judaizers. Now, you know, he, he did this to let us know that popes are weak human men, frail and subject to personal failure, even though... In the very narrow window of teaching faith and morals to the universal church, they still remain infallible. Uh, but things haven't gotten much better since then. So pray for our current pope because he's 86. He'll soon be uh, making an account before the divine tribunal for all his prudential decisions, such as selecting immoral men to help run the church. A dreadful thing when you think about it. Jules, thank you so much for the, for the story and for the backstory. Thank you, Brad.